So I'm on the YouTube the other day and I'm watching walleye videos and I see this guy wearing these goofy clothes catching all these walleyes, pounding walleyes, walleye after walleye after walleye. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I really wish I knew how to work a jigging wrap. Where to fish a jigging wrap? What kind of jigging wraps do I fish? How do I rig up a rod to fish jigging wraps? Well, you are in luck because today we are going to answer all of those questions, at least what I know about jigging wraps. This could easily turn into an hour long rant about a jigging wrap. But uh, we're going to try to keep it to about somewhere between 5 to 10 minutes. We might throw a fish catch or two in if we catch a fish, which we should. Feels decent. Oh boy. What is this? This could be the one we are looking for. Oh, it is. Barely, barely hooked up. Grab my net. Got him. And he is off already. You can see how quick that was. Driving around this uh, deep mud flat here and just picking off these roamers all day long. It's a blast. That's about a 20 inch fish there. So in that video, that guy was fishing deep rock humps. Um, he was fishing rock fingers and rock humps. And he was, these spots aren't large, sprawling areas full of walleyes. Um, he was picking off schools of fish that were pretty much tightly knit um, right on the crowns of these reefs and humps. Um, and when I'm fishing that way, what I like to do is kind of mark the school out. Um, in that scenario where these fish are real active and they're getting up on the crowns of these reefs, I like to cast. So typically I'll get my bait out there. I'm going all the way down to bottom on a slack line. You got to let that thing fall. When you're on bottom, I'll drop my rod and I'll do two quick pops and I drop my rod back to the fish. And then I'll do it, same thing, over and over and over. The one thing I'm gonna stress is that how hard you're ripping these things. It's not a pull, is something I see a lot of guys do. They like to kind of pull it like that. And all that's doing is kind of lurching your bait forward twice. What you wanna do, get those two quick pops in. It's more of a wrist thing than a, uh, than an arm thing. You know, if you're, if, you, if you're going like this, um, it's just not what those fish wanna eat. So I'll throw it out there again quick. Yeah, so down to bottom, let's pretend I'm on bottom, and you can watch my wrist. It's just two quick pops like that. And then back to pop. Sometimes if these fish are sitting really high up in the water, like let's say they're seven feet off bottom, I might do three or four pops and really get that bait to bounce up. Now what that quick wrist movement does versus a pull is it gives that bait that side to side hop like that. And uh, when they're falling, so you're gonna rip it and that bait's gonna go and start to fall and that's gonna dart the other way and then glide down. So you're actually kind of walking the dog um, you know, near the bottom of the lake, which is extremely effective. Now there's a couple of ways you feel bites doing that. Sometimes you'll feel a fish pop it on the way down. You know if you're fishing a jig and you're popping it up and that fish punches it real hard. Sometimes you'll get that same feeling, but most of the time in the summer, you're gonna feel, you're just gonna go to rip up and there's gonna be a fish on. Sometimes they got it in the mouth. Most of the time they got it somewhere on the outside of the face. They just kind of take these baits and uh, what they'll actually do is just pin them right to the bottom of the lake um, most of the time, you know, you really catch them on any hook. Now the one thing I'm going to stress, like you saw a thousand times in that video, is how, it, I don't want to use the word inefficient, but how goofy fish get hooked on these. Um, very rarely do I ever catch a lot of fish that are just in their throat. You know, they have the whole bait in their mouth. When they're trapping at the bottom, most of the time what's happening is you're getting them with either one of these hooks in the end, which is really easy for them to leverage out of their mouth. This is the best hooking hook. I've tried playing around with a whole bunch of different sizes and stuff, and honestly, I don't really see a big difference. 
um, which is kind of bizarre because you'd think it, that would, would make a difference. But um, it, it's mainly these hooks that get caught up and it'll leverage out of their mouth a lot easier versus a treble hook or a big jig hook. Um, with that being said, I definitely prefer to rig up with mono when I'm doing this technique, um, this whole snapping thing. I run eight to 12 pound mono, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, then I throw a ball bearing swivel up from the bait about a foot or two. Um, and that's really all there is to it. It takes a little bit just to get the cadence down, um, you know, making sure you're on bottom. That's uh, you're watching your slack to know when you're on bottom. Um, now the other scenario where these baits are extremely, you know, efficient or just adds to the versatility of the bait is uh, if you're vertical fishing. And that I will tend to use a little bit more braid, but I still really like mono overall. Uh, the one thing you get with braid is obviously a lot more sensitivity. Um, you know, you're, I still, I'll still tie in a 12 foot leader um, just because most of the time I'm fishing pretty clear water. And uh, when you're vertically fishing these baits, I'll throw off the back of the boat so you can see. This would be a scenario where you're picking out individual, you know, you're, you see the fish on sonar, I'm dropping it near the back of my boat so I can see my bait and the fish at the same time. And I'm working sometimes individual fish, sometimes big pot, pods of fish. Um, but basically when you're doing this, what you want to do is I've, you can do the snap thing. I have less luck doing that when I'm fishing vertical. Most of the time what I'll do is I'll do this quick pop up and I'll just kind of tail my rod down until the bait hits bottom. Pop my rod up, tail my bait down until it hits bottom. Same thing, a lot, this kind of fishing, when you're vertically fishing the bait, you'll feel a lot more bites on the way down versus when the bait's on bottom, but you always wanna make sure it touches bottom, in my opinion, at least I've had the best uh, you know, success with doing that. Making sure my bait's hitting bottom before I'm popping it back up. And a lot of times, same thing, even though you're kind of walking that bait down with your rod, um, the fish still eat it off the bottom. I'm not really sure why, that's just my experience from fishing these things. So I'll show you one more time here. It's kind of a, it takes a little bit to get the hang of doing this. Basically you're popping it up quick and I'm just barely keeping the slack out of my rod as the bait falls. So pop it up quick and just kind of barely keeping that slack out. I still want that bait going down fast. I just don't want it to be a free fall. Not big, but he's hooked right in the shin. I will scoop him up. What a nice fish there. So I'll show you how he's got it. And I'm talking about fish that are trapping these baits to bottom. He's actually hooked right in the belly. There he's off. Now I'm hooked. Yeah, he's a nice about 17 inch fish. And that was going straight vertical. You could probably just about see it happen. I don't know if my bait came into the cone yet, but uh, basically all that happened was I dropped down, saw the school backed up right to him as I was cruising along. And uh, whoa, there he was, pretty simple. 
Now we're going to talk about uh, the different types of bottom and how that'll vary how I work these baits. Um, these baits are awesome in weeds too. Um, a lot of people think you just can't use this bait in weeds. When you're popping it real hard, it's actually a pretty weedless bait, which is pretty surprising for a big chunk of lead with three hooks on it. Um, when I'm fishing it in weeds, I'll get it out there. You know, you never want to make real long casts with these. That's another great point. Um, you want to kind of, your sweet spot's going to be somewhere between, you know, the, the second two thirds of your cast. So I don't really cast too far because if you're getting too far out there, your bait's just kind of moving like that versus getting up and doing that big hang time dart. So when I'm fishing weeds, typically I'll kind of get, you know, let my bait get near bottom, pop it. And I kind of time it out so that my, my, and this is a little bit more beneficial with braid. Now it's not a must. You're still going to catch a lot more fish with mono just because of the sponginess, but I'll kind of time my drops out so that my bait's not quite hitting bottom. Then generally two or three times throughout the retrieve, I might just let it touch bottom just to make sure I know I'm close to bottom. And that's typically how I'll work this bait in weed. Now when you're doing that, you are gonna feel a lot more bites when the bait's falling, typically, you know, cause you're not uh, letting it hit bottom quite as much. Um, the, the other scenario um, I'll do, typically when I'm fishing weeds is early, earlier in the season on a lot of our big natural lakes. So I'll get my bait out there. And earlier in the year when these water temps are a little colder, um, in the summer this is totally an aggression thing. It's just a big time triggering aspect. Um, same thing in the spring, but you'll get a lot more bites when the water's colder, working them a little bit slower. So typically what I'll do is I'll get it out there, you know, let them, make sure I'm hit, hitting bottom, and then I'll just hang my rod tip up there after I pop it. Now that's going to let that bait go. It's going to dart quick both ways. You're going to walk the dog with it, and then that bait's just going to tail a little bit slower down. You still get that triggering aspect of the hops, but those fish are a lot more prone to grab that slower falling bait when the water's colder. A lot of times that's how I'll fish it late in, late in the year too, October, November, just when you get those little bit colder water temps. Now the biggest thing about this bait and probably the most powerful part about it is it turns 34 feet of water or these deep depths into an extremely fast area to fish. These things weigh almost an ounce. This is a number seven. Um, I fish sevens more than nines, although the nine is a great bait. Um, they're probably actually pretty interchangeable. I just end up fishing more sevens. I should definitely fish more nines. Should write that down. But uh, yeah, th these things are, you can cover so much water at a deep depth while still manipulating a bait. A lot of these areas that would be trolling areas, like I'm in 34 feet of water right now catching walleyes. Um, a lot of these areas that would be trolling areas just to keep that kind of bottom contact, I can make long casts and fish fast at these depths, which is just a remarkable tool. Um, so that's, those are pretty much the finer points to these things. Uh, the one thing I'll say about these too, when you're rigging a rod, is you want something soft. This is a rod that I use for endless different, you know, it's extremely versatile rod. It's St. Croix's Mojo Bass. Um, this is a, what is this, a drop shot finesse rod. It is a six foot 10 medium light action. And you want that real soft tip to hold these fish. That guy in that video, um, he kept saying how he keeps losing fish on these. Better baby. No! no. Oh. Mitch! Oh. oh, that's so scary. Oh, no. No, no, no. no. And you do lose a lot of fish on them. Um, there's, that's just how, I mean, they just don't hook fish extremely well a lot of times. But uh, having a nice soft rod like that, you can see all that flex in the tip. That's gonna land a lot more fish for you when you're fishing these baits. If you guys wanna see more videos, why don't you check out this chicken wrap video over here, this walleye fishing video here, and this musky trolling video over here.